Hi, my name is Carolina, and you might know me as Crayola, and I work here at Camp Evergreen. Today, I will be telling you my testimony. And yeah, before starting, I will first let you know how God has been teaching me uh, the way that testimonies work, that they are a medium to encourage each other, to lift up each other, and also to challenge each other. I was born in Mexico City in um, 1993. My family was only my mom, my sister of five years when I was born, and me. And we had a beautiful childhood that had its, up, its ups and downs. Um, my family since yeah if, even before like my mom's generation they were catholics so i grew up as a catholic and i went to catholic schools so by the age of 11 12 i started just asking questions i guess as any other adolescent and my mom was like whoa stop there i guess that if you go to the priest and ask those questions they're gonna excommunate you or something like that. So I kind of start uh, on decline on that way because I wasn't understanding a lot of things. I wasn't getting the answers that I was expecting to get. And around that time when I turned 11, we moved fr uh, from Mexico City to a smaller city. When we move, uh, I get introduced to a family which um, father of this family is a pastor and he starts teaching me about how to read the Bible and things that I never learned as a Catholic, I guess. And I started going to Bible studies, which I never thought you could actually study the Bible. And as I was doing this, I thought to myself, well, I really want to become a Christian. But my mom was a really conservative Catholic and her idea was no you were born in a Catholic family you're gonna stay as a Catholic so that was a little bit of a challenge because I didn't feel like I belonged in my mom's church anymore so I started having more doubts and stuff until my mom said okay that's it you won't keep going to the Bible studies So I think that marked an age uh, and an, yeah, a an space of time in, in my life where I just split it from God, from Jesus, and from trying to learn more and read my Bible, uh, which is pretty sad because I started making bad, bad decisions. I started trying to please everyone just for the sake of having friends and people that will like me since I suffered bullying at school. So yeah, from age 14 till age 18 maybe, I just started like hanging out a lot of, a lot of uh, people that I would call friends, but they weren't actually my friends and they started being a bad influence in my life because they introduced me to alcohol to yeah I don't know a lot kind of drugs um, cigarettes and my life was I am trying to be a good girl I am trying to do good at school I am trying to be a good daughter but then my way of uh, filling this void I was feeling was going to parties just doing like silly things with my friends and not focusing on the good news of Jesus. When I was at university, so now we're talking when I was around uh, 19, 18, 19 years old, I tried to focus more. I was still in these uh, good deeds kind of situation because that's what I had learned. But then At some point, I started relationships that weren't good for me at all. Uh, when I turned 20, 21, I started dating this person and I thought that he was the love of my life and I was like, you know, on cloud nine kind of thing. Uh, but suddenly 
after a year of being together, I started no noticing all this kind of abusive behaviors that he had and how he was trying to control me and how he will sometimes emotionally abuse from me and of course all these things just started building up and just started getting worse because once you let someone uh, make you feel less they are gonna feel powerful it was really hard for me to notice it it was as if I had willingly put uh, yeah, fabric on top of my eyes and just not trying to see the reality and how bad this relationship was being for both of us actually until something just started like growing inside of me and honestly I think it was the Holy Spirit being like hey wake up you like I don't want you to be there and yeah I just started noticing more and more abusive behaviors until I said enough is enough and honestly it wasn't easy it wasn't I said enough and enough was enough because it took me a while um, we went through a lot of things together so it took me more than half a year I guess to say enough is enough and this is it like finally and when I actually um, and strongly and boldly did it when I finally finished it it just it kind of exploded everything exploded in my face and I just started feeling this necessity of being closer to God and coming back to him and just try to forgive myself for everything that I, I did to myself for so many years and also try to forgive others for whatever they had done to me and it was amazing how God again put someone that she studied at university with me and I was actually so I started dating this person when I turned 20 I stopped uh, when I was 22 and that's when I was about to graduate or I was already graduating from university and I was finally getting to this job as a translator and in this office I find this friend from university and she's a Christian and she just starts praying for me and she's seeing how I'm struggling and I'm trying to tell her what I'm going through but she wasn't so close to me so I was still like not trusting her right and it was kind of like a battle inside of me saying I feel like I should trust her but I am embarrassed I am ashamed of whatever I've done in this um, entire like period <laughs> of time and yeah it was it was a struggle but she started praying for me and she started telling me how Jesus loves us all and how much he loves me and how no matter what I've done he forgives me and he accepts me for who I am <laughs> and honestly that that was really hard for me in that moment because I didn't love me I didn't forgive like I wasn't forgiving myself and I didn't accept it myself uh, for who I was <laughs> so just listening to all these things I I knew that it was God working through so many people I knew at that time and especially through this friend who now is she's my best friend and yeah I just asked her hey are you still going to that church because I knew she was going to a church I just woke up and I had this feeling this urge telling me you 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 have to go and as soon as she saw me in in the church she started crying and she went and hugged me and I think that's the moment where I said okay this is a friendship a true friendship given by God and 
Yeah, I think my process as a Christian was really long, really hard in the beginning because I was learning a lot of things and I was feeling a lot of things as if they were rules because I wasn't understanding a lot of it. But after a year, I went to this ladies retreat and I just understand, like it just kind of fell on top of me <laughs> and I could finally understand how is through God's love and my love towards him how all these things that people believe as rules just start happening naturally and you want to obey God and you want to follow God because you love him and because you can see if you look back in your life in your in your past you can see how he has helped you and he has been there for you and I was able to see this and that weekend was wonderful for me and on a 28th on a february 28th i became a christian and i chose to follow god and jesus no matter what no matter yeah the consequences because my family is still not a um, christian family i'm the only christian in my family but I went for it and it, everything just started changing and of course it takes a while and your new being also takes a while to take shape and to understand everything that's said and written in the Bible. I think it's a lifetime process. It's really important that you stop for a minute and you think back and start counting all those times, all those people that God put into your life so that you can see his incredible work because that's where your testimony relies on. And yeah, right now with what's going on, um, I really believe that God still wants me here at Camp Evergreen. And we miss all of our campers, but we are still here and we are still working to see yeah, the lives of so many children and so many families transformed by the power of Jesus. <laughs>